not currently pregnant, nor do I have Zika. At least I don't think I do, as three out of four people with Zika don't show symptoms. This is a more serious five minutes of Fergie as we answer the question, what are some of the hard decisions you have to make as missionaries? It is also longer than five minutes as there is a lot to share. So here is a quick overview for you. In April of last year, Kate and I had Zika. I was seven months pregnant. In May 2015 was when we first started figuring out, finding out what Zika was. Like we didn't even know what it was. In December of 2015 was when they first started connecting Zika with microcephaly and thinking, hey, this might be a big deal. Um, in January, people started asking us, hey, you're from Brazil, what's the Zika stuff? So in February, I wrote a blog article about it, and I have the link there, and for all the future links in this video, I'll have them numbered and in the description of this video or on my blog if you want to follow up on There's tons and tons of research, I want to make sure that I'm factual. April of this year, the link between microcephaly and Zika was confirmed by the CDC. In May of 2016, the Jeff and Lindsay Turner, Missionaries in Cars, is an awesome podcast that we did about Zika. In May, we also bought our tickets and made some pretty big decisions for our family regarding Zika and regarding being pregnant. That it's pretty scary. Um, at the same time, I think that a lot of people are making a lot, it's a lot of hype about it, but it's it's not as bad as people are saying, and at the same time, it can, it can be as bad as people are saying, depending on where you're at. And nothing happened to Anna Sophia, but if that were to happen, that's pretty, that's pretty, pretty scary. And the, the thing, the biggest scare about Zika is that there's no, we don't know much, is that we don't know exactly how it's linked to microcephaly. We just know that it is. And I think that's, um, that's Zika in a nutshell. So the end result of everything that we've told you up to now is basically Zika is like having a mild flu. It's not that big of a deal. Put on some bug spray. Don't worry about it unless you're pregnant. So, here we are with this vlog. What about if you are looking to be pregnant or are pregnant? What about Zika? First of all, this is an issue for the US too. The official number is almost 300 US women that have Zika and are pregnant. So before you freak out, about half of that number is from Puerto Rico area that is considered part of the US. Um, but, and it's in the lower part of the U.S., the more the southern, the warmer area with the mosquito, obviously. Um, but still, this is something that isn't just, oh, it's other people, I don't have to worry about it. So before we talk about all the billions of dollars that people are investing in fighting Zika, let's also remember that malaria is actually 1,400 times worse, actually much worse than that. In one year, malaria will kill 200,000 babies, unborn babies, because their mothers get malaria. And the worst part about it is that malaria is treatable. Why are we not seeing this? Because it really doesn't affect us. It affects people, especially in the sub-Saharan area of Africa. What's the actual risk of getting microcephaly if you have Zika when you're pregnant? The official statistic is 13%, so one in 13. So if I'm pregnant and I get Zika, I have a 1 in 13 chance that my baby will have some kind of deformity or miscarriage or shrunken head syndrome. Before we get freaked out about that number, um, let's see exactly what that means. So there have been, I, it's too hard to really count how many cases of Zika there are, especially considering that three out of four people who have Zika don't even have any symptoms. So it's like, Basically, you only know you really have it if you get a blood test. And not very many people actually do that. So there's been about 4,000, according to National Geographic, um, cases of microcephaly that have happened this past year. Um, and But only 700, around 700 of those have actually been confirmed. Of those, 139 have caused death. So if you are in a Zika-infected area, what is a pregnant woman to do? Well, the same thing that everybody else is to do. Sleep under a mosquito net, um, put on sunscreen, sun, put on bug spray, um, do the best you can not to get bit by this mosquito. Um, but really, if you want to know what's happened in Brazil, business goes on as usual. Our friends are still getting pregnant. Um, the CDC suggests not to get pregnant, but that isn't a viable option for most of the women here. And women are told not to get pregnant, it's not mentioning men which is a pretty important part about getting pregnant. Um, and I think that's a serious issue, especially in Latin America, 
where it seems to fall all on the woman and her responsibility. If you are a missionary in Brazil and your biological clock is ticking, what should you do about Zika and pregnancy? Um, well, the CDC says that basically I should just go back to the United States until I hit menopause. And that's not an option. Kate and I um, are really faced with a dilemma. The main dilemma that we have is trying to balance four different things. We're trying to balance the privilege that we have, so we have choices that the people that we work with, they don't have. We're trying to balance the risk, because this is a viable risk, one out of 13. Um, we are also trying to balance trusting God. We know that God called us here to Brazil to serve. Uh, what does that mean for our responsibility with that? And then lastly, our responsibility to family and our supporters. Um, how can we truly honor all of these things and find a balance in the decisions that we make? So this is part of being a missionary, and so that's why we're vlogging about it, because we are missionary vloggers. But this is not easy. Um, and I want you to know straight up that this isn't about taking a, a right choice or a wrong choice. These are about following God and the steps that he has for us. There could be other missionaries in the same position that we are that make a different decision. And we're not saying that they are wrong and this is the way you need to do it. As Kate and I were praying and thinking, um, we really felt that maybe the next time that we went on furlough or home assignment, um, that we, that would be a good time for us to get pregnant, especially for the first trimester. That's the most dangerous time um, because that's when there's the brain development. So um, we would be coming home December 2nd and hopefully getting pregnant if that's God's will. And if that happens, then after the first trimester, we will return to Brazil and serve as missionaries and have our baby in Brazil. Um, we know we are actually living in the center of the worst part of Zika, the Zika and the microcephaly. This is scary. And yes, there's even articles about how you can still, still getting Zika later on in the pregnancy is still a danger for the child. Um, we don't know if there will be more discovered before this time. We don't know if we won't be able to get pregnant. Um, there's too many unknowns to know, but we are glad that you are with us and praying for us and then supporting and helping us figure out these important decisions. What worries me about Zika and with Richard getting pregnant is that we could have a baby with microcephaly. That would be, I mean, we don't know if the baby would live or not. We don't know, you know, we definitely know the baby would have a lot of difficulty in life. We definitely know that it would be a lot of money to make sure the baby is healthy. We know that it would be really, really hard if a baby, if we had a baby with microcephaly. And I know that I'd probably cry a lot because um, my baby would be suffering, you know, which is definitely not easy. I definitely think we're taking good precautions though. We're doing what we can with the gifts we've been given with. And I feel like that's all we can do. Other than that, we really can't be afraid, you know, because it's in God's hands. And um, he's not caught by surprise by this whole Zika and microcephaly and all this stuff. So um, we just got to trust him.